In this lesson, we'll create a Works Cited page. Before we do, though, it's helpful for students to understand what a Works Cited page does. One way that academic writing differs from other kinds of writing is the need for writers to identify your research. In MLA, we do so through in-text citations and the Works Cited page. We'll get to in-text citations in a future lesson, but think about the Works Cited page as a collection of all the sources you use to write your paper. The reader, in this case your teacher, can look at the Works Cited page and get a sense of whether your research was thorough and credible. If necessary, he or she can even look up the sources you used and read them. There are some general guidelines for listing your sources on your Works Cited page. Your sources should be alphabetized by the author's last name, starting at A and moving to Z. If you have more than one article or book written by the same author, then you'll alphabetize the titles as well. If the article has no author, you'll alphabetize using the information that comes first in the reference, usually the title or publishing organization. We'll talk a little more about that in a future lesson. Now that we've gone over the basics, let's get to the actual Works Cited page. Since we'll be adding it to the template we've been developing throughout this course, open that document now. If you can't locate the template, you can either go back to previous lessons or use the sample template provided in the Supplementary Materials section of this tutorial. At this point, your template has one page, which contains titling information and is where your essay will begin. We're going to add a second page, so start by placing your cursor somewhere on the main body of the page. Click on Insert and select Manual Break from the drop-down menu. In the box that appears, select Page Break and be sure the style is set to None. Click OK. You should now be on page 2 of your template. Be sure that Line Spacing 2 is still selected and click on the Centered button. Your cursor should move to the center of your page. Type Works Cited, capitalizing the first letter of each word, and then hit the Return key. Click on the Align Left button. Next, click on Format and choose Styles and Formatting in the drop-down menu. In the box that appears, make sure the Paragraph Styles option is selected and double-click on Hanging Indent. Close the box. You should see that your cursor has jumped a little to the right. That's normal. However, you'll probably also find that your line spacing has changed to line spacing 1, and we want to change that back, so click on line spacing 2. Now we're going to enter some text so you can see what a hanging indent looks like. Don't worry about the formatting too much. We'll get into that in the next lesson. For now, just try to type the following as closely as you can. Brophy, comma, Mary Beth, period. Quotation marks, MLA Works Cited Page Layout, period, quotation marks. Click the italics button. Open Office Writer for college students. Click the italics button again to deselect. 8 October 2014. period. Be sure that you don't hit return until you're finished with your entry, and that you hit return at the end of the entry, even if you find the cursor falling naturally on a new line. Now type the same entry a second time and hit return. You should now have two works cited entries, with the first line of each entry starting about half an inch to the left of the lines that follow. This is called a hanging indent. The purpose of the hanging indent is to make it easy for the reader to skim down your list of entries and find the one he or she is looking for. To demonstrate this, go ahead and change the name of the second entry from Brophy, Mary Beth to Student, Jonathan. As you can see, the hanging indent pushes the author names to a priority position, so the reader can quickly skim down and find the source he or she is looking for. Now there's one more thing I want to teach you. Students typically encounter two problems with hanging indents. They either can't find the key to create a hanging indent, or they end up accidentally applying hanging indent formatting somewhere in their essays and find themselves with something like this. Yikes! As you can see, I've got a couple of paragraphs of text here, 
an open office writer has formatted them both in Hanging InNet. This happens most with students who add their sources as they write their essays. If that's the way you like to work, then there's an easy way to prevent the problem. Instead of setting up hanging indent on the page, keep it formatted normally and type your entries with no hanging indent, making sure to hit return at the end of every source. Then, after your essay is finished, select all of your sources at once, being careful not to select the Works Cited title, and click on Format. Choose Styles and Formatting from the drop-down menu. Make sure Paragraph Styles is selected, then double-click on Hanging Indent. Close the box. With your sources still selected, click on Line Spacing 2. Working this way ensures that you aren't moving back and forth from normal formatting to Hanging Indent as you write, reducing the chances that you'll accidentally apply Hanging Indents in places you don't want them. But what happens if, despite your best efforts, you do find yourself with hanging indents in the wrong place? Making them go away takes a few steps, but it isn't a major problem. Select everything that is in hanging indent. Now click on Format and choose Styles and Formatting from the drop-down menu. Be sure Paragraph Styles is selected in the box that appears and double-click on Default. Close the box. Unfortunately, as you can see, while the hanging indents are gone, so is the formatting we want to keep. So with everything still selected, click on Line Spacing 2. Now put your cursor in front of the first word in each paragraph and hit the Tab key. And that's it! You now have a Works Cited page that's ready for some sources. Thanks for joining me for this tutorial.